Humanitarian organizations in southern Arizona have long been operating independently, dispensing aid to illegal border crossers by volunteers and funded by donations. As government regulations close in, the communication gap widens. Now, both sides are involved in a legal battle. Well, we're here today because we have been asking um, Fish and Wildlife to meet with us to develop a plan so that we could help save lives here on the um, Buenos Aires Wildlife Refuge. And um, we've had trouble getting them to agree to a meeting. Well, in the last eight months, basically, I've met with, uh, with these groups five different occasions you know, from the uh, Tucson Samaritans, the Green Valley Samaritans, quite a bit with the humane borders. So. We wish they would um, work with us and that we could work with them. Uh, we sat down with a bunch of them uh, one day, my head law enforcement guy and I, and, and we had a nice meeting. Uh, we told them we have zero tolerance for littering on the refuge, and, and we were trying to figure out how they could could provide water without without putting out water bottles, and, and we had some old abandoned windmill site to have wells there that nothing wrong right now. And we were going to cooperatively have them buy the equipment. We were going to put it in to... Uh, develop these as solar wells and put a tank with a spigot so the uh, migrants could use them on their way up and and uh, then a couple weeks after that we uh, had some problems with them putting water bottles out on the refuge and so we decided that I uh, couldn't work with folks that weren't going to stay legal. So. We think it's pretty silly to be uh, giving us tickets or arresting us for, for the crime of littering when we're putting out sealed bottles of water which are precious things in the desert. And we're doing a lot of pickup of trash. But um, we're going to be here today to say we're going to continue to put water out. And um, if we have to go to court and fight uh, through the court system uh, until we reach the higher courts with that, we will do so. And that's where we're here today. You know, we ended up having to cite a couple of them in the court, and the judge and, and the juries have agreed with us that it is litter. And uh, we have zero tolerance for litter on a National Wildlife Refuge. We're here for the wildlife and for the public to enjoy, and we cannot tolerate that. One of the things that's limiting the number of deaths and cutting down the injuries is humanitarian aid. And so if they can cut down on humanitarian aid, then the, uh, the injuries will go up and the number of deaths will go up. And uh, uh, that enforces uh, their policy. The, uh, it's, it's a policy uh, sponsored by the U.S. government whose success depends upon people being seriously injured and killed. We fully support humanitarian efforts. We just disagree on the methods they're using to do it. They don't have to trash a national wildlife refuge to carry out humanitarian efforts. And that's, that's where the disagreement is, and we've tried to communicate that to them. Does the Humane Borders uh, maintain water stations on the... Yeah, they have a permit for three water stations on the refuge that they maintain, and they've had that for several years. So you do work with humanitarian groups? Yeah, quite frequently. If they, if, if they go through the proper channels? Exactly, yeah. Humanitarian aid is not only a right, it's an obligation, it's a responsibility. And to prosecute humanitarians and deny humanitarian aid to people who need it is in violation of international human rights and humanitarian law. There's ways to do humanitarian efforts without breaking the law. And that's what we're trying to encourage them to do. Is There's continuing deaths in these areas, so we have to be out there. We can't wait any longer. From January 1st to right now, we've had there was one death, and that was two days ago, about a mile from the border, and right close to a, a refuge house down there. So we're not sure what he what he expired from. We're not worried about um, about any arrests. There are risks inherent in any of the work that we do. And we believe that the work we do is very important and life-saving. And no matter what, we have to continue that life-saving work, no matter the risk. Has uh, anybody from No More Deaths ever applied for a permit? No, they've never applied for a permit. They've been sent the stuff on how to, how to apply, and they, they seem to have no interest in applying for a permit. Okay, I'm a member of Samaritans from Tucson, Arizona, and I'm out here today to protest this um, travesty that we can't put water out where people are dying in the Buenos Aires National Wildlife Refuge. We have at least 14 sites where they can get water out of a spigot that's drinking water that our staff uses. And uh, in addition to that, we've got lots of water tanks and we're in, the, we're in the process right now of installing four to six more wells that are... It is the government who's the violator here. It's the government that's causing the destruction and 
not only human life, but the, the ecosystem of, of this area. We feel that we've got enough water to take care of what we need. We've got over 30 waters available on this plot of land, which is 117,000 acres. And it's probably got the most water of any similar kind of area in the southwest desert. This is our, our statement to law enforcement and our instructions by our lawyers. Um, you can fill this out, put your name in it. You uh, can hand this to anybody that you encounter. You're not obligated to say anything else about what we're doing. Um, you then would ask, am I free to go? And if they say yes, then that's at the point at which you leave. And if they say no, you're obligated to provide your name and identification and that's it. Nothing else is obligatory. There's a uh, law enforcement on either side. What, what do you think is going to happen? I think the odds are that we'll get ticketed. For doing this. But we're ready for that because we want to. We do want to push it through the court system. Well, we were just carrying the sign because this is why we're here, because humanitarian aid is never a crime. And uh, we're just told by one of the officers that uh, you cannot have signs on the refuge. Yeah, they are being ticketed as we speak, yes. 